welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Month of the Full Moon here on Reaction and Review. Yes, guys, I am once more dedicating an entire month to movies from Full Moon Features, and I've decided to kick off this month by taking a look at the first entry in another very popular Full Moon franchise. Tonight's movie came out in 1985. That movie is Trancers. Now, um... I wish I could tell you anything else about this movie, guys. I mean, I know for a fact that it stars Full Moon regular Tim Thomerson. I know that the movie stars Helen Hunt. I find it weird that Helen Hunt got her, got her name on the cover, even though this is a five-movie box set and she's only in the first one. But, oh well. Uh, I know it has something to do with time travel, that's literally as far as all of my knowledge goes. I have no earthly clue if this movie's going to be any good at all. The only way I'm going to find out, though, is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Trancers. Wait. Wait. So, if Whistler's plan is to go back in time... And to kill his enemy, or rather to kill the ancestors of his enemies, so that way they cease to be. Then how the hell is there still knowledge that these people existed in the future? Like, how in the hell does Death know that there's supposed to be three people on this board when one of them never existed? Why wouldn't the time stream have corrected itself and there'd be a different third person there? I totally understand, guys, that it's a little bit early for me to be blowing holes in this film's story, and I'm totally digging what I'm seeing so far. It's just, this movie, I guess, really didn't think all of the time, all the time travel shit through properly, and it's probably going to bother me a little bit. So, let me see if I've got this straight. So far over the course of this film, our hero, Jack has gotten into a fistfight with a knife-wielding little old lady, and now he's beating the shit out of a mall... out of a mall Santa. You know... You know, Jack honestly may have, may have to fight some real odd fucking targets, but... God damn it, it, it's still actually is sort of cool. A little bit odd, certainly, but definitely cool. You guys can hear that, right? Yeah, we're being treated to an absolutely horrendous punk cover of Jingle Bells. Really is just awful, guys. Now, perhaps maybe it's because I'm not the biggest biggest fan of punk, of punk rock, but that still doesn't stop this from being exceptionally shitty punk rock. And for the love of God, out of all the Christmas songs you could do a punk cover of, why the fuck Jingle, jingle Bells? That's just... God damn, this is hideous. Sorry guys if I really haven't been saying anything recently. It's just that I've been getting kind of sucked into the movie. The story here, even though the story's got its flaws, and boy howdy do I have a lot of flaws I can touch on. The film itself is actually really, really solid. I'm really digging it. So... You know, uh, at, so, on the plus side, at least honestly, this month is off to a good start. Now I just gotta hope and, I just gotta hope and pray that the ending in this thing is as good as everything else. Well, guys, that was Trancers. Let me shut that off. Okay. So, I mentioned that this movie's got some problems. I did mention that a little... I did mention that about about 20 minutes ago. Um, I guess now it's time I can talk about these problems. The biggest problem uh, comes, actually, in terms of writing, I'm talking problems with the writing, uh, begins and ends with the film's very premise, in the sense that while it, while it all sounds really cool, it was really done in such a goofy fashion that it's going to leave most viewers asking a mountain of questions. You see, guys, when you do a time travel story, when you do anything involving time travel, you need to know exactly what kind of rules you're putting in place. And it normally helps if those rules are logical and that they make some level of sense. Where even something is, you know, goofy and, you know, like, 
well, just plain goofy and odd, such as say like Bill and Ted, still had to follow very strict rules so that way all of their all of their time all their time travel hijinks made some level of coherent sense. Trancers doesn't do that, and it leaves so many questions. For instance, so our villain Whistler, his whole his whole scheme was he was going to travel back three hundred years. Basically, was going to body surf into the you know body of one of his one of his ancestors, and so they send Jack back by having him do the very same thing and having him body surf into the body of one of his ancestors. This brings up a big question. Uh, which is never addressed in the film. What the hell happens to the consciousness of the person who you're taking, who who you're taking the body of? Because at no time do they ever hint exactly what the hell happened to Phil when Jack took Phil's body. What the hell happened to Phil? And when Jack was pulled back into the future for like for maybe like a minute and a half. Uh, Phil was able to retake was able to retake the body, but then Jack got dumped right back in. So is the consciousness of the of the previous person still in there, or is it like in some oddball like nether fucking plane? Like, what's the deal with that? Moreover, Whistler's plan itself doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So Whistler is going to go back in time. He's going to kill the ancestors. Of the of essentially the heads of the police force, because the because because the because the police troopers are uh, are are essentially governed by a they are governed by a tribunal, and uh, apparently when Whistler goes back in time, he kills off the ancestors of each of these of each of these tribunal members. Then they then they naturally will fade away into nothingness. The problem with that is, if they if if they technically have never existed, then there would be no memory of them being part of that part of that tri tribunal. Therefore, therefore, then the time stream would have logically corrected itself. We would have had a new person in the in the in the tri in the tribunal, and that's not what happens. Instead, it's like, oh well, we just saw this person fade away. How the fuck do you even know that that person exists when they never existed in your timeline because of Whistler's actions? And it, it's just one of those minor things that you just sit there and you ponder it and you ponder it and you think about it and it just starts to just dig at you. It just drives you fucking nuts. Moreover, why the hell is it that they can only send back the consciousness of a human being, but they can still teleport small boxes full of weapons and gadgets and gizmos and essentially, you know, and basically teleport them to wherever in the hell Jack is in Los Angeles in 1985 because they do that twice. Um, why then can't they just like temporally send Jack, like send like his whole body back in time, body and soul back in time, and I don't know, maybe put his maybe put his ancestor uh, in some kind of a fucking like suspended state or maybe like a comatose state, something along those lines. So just simply then so you're not running into the whole ancestors meet up paradox thing that usually is a huge huge problem in a lot of uh, time travel films. Basically, guys, the problem with the writing is that even though it's got an amazing premise, it's also kind of sort of hobbled because they don't know how to really utilize it and have it make sense. The ending is also kind of hobbled by this. I'm going to give a little. I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, at the end of the film, Jack has no way of getting back to uh, his current time. He has no way of getting back to 2247. Uh, so he's stuck in 1985. That would make total sense if not if not about half hour before that at about like the halfway point of the film so like half hour 40 minutes before that they actually do directly pull jack back to 2247 without him having to take the having to having to take the shot that was inside his gun meaning that he's not technically stuck there there's still there's still at least one member of the fucking tribunal left and the medic should still be there why can't they just bring him back out bring him back to his time instead of leaving him stranded there and his body wired up on a table in a back room uh, you know it's just the ending 
now the ending, as interesting as it is, and as cool as and, and as cool as the whole thing is, you sort of look at it and go, "Wait, but he's not really stuck there. He can't be stuck there." I'm not, I, I, and guys, I'm not going to spoil anything else beyond the fact that they claim that Jack is stuck in 1985 at the end of the film, which is, I guess, kind of a sequel hook. And since they were able to make five five more films in the series, it, I'm going to assume it was a sequel hook that worked. That worked, that worked relatively well. Now, if you can look past all of this, I mean, if you can look past all of the time travel bullshit that just wasn't quite handled properly here, you still have a very solid sci-fi film. Um, well, there is one other question I have in, involving writing. Uh, why is it that every single trancer that Jack happens to run into looks totally fine and they look totally natural until they see Jack and then all of a sudden... And, and then all of a sudden they begin to get these like they begin to get these like sores on their face and their skin changes color. It's like, are I mean, is that is that like part of how Whistler like programmed them to become his mindless zombies? Is to is to immediately look as zombified as possible any any time they happen they, they they happen they they happen to come within smell distance of Jack of Jack death. Whole thing is just a little bit weird. However, once more, if you can look past that, if you can if you can look past all of the time travel shit, we do have a really fascinating film here. It is a very very well well written film past the mountain of flaws I've mentioned. And you know, even though I wasn't able to look to to look past the flaws, I'm still I'm still coming up with more and more questions that all tie into this shit. Um I still found it to be a really fun movie because because as because as long as you don't let these problems ruin it for you then then the movie's fine. I mean, it just left me ask, asking a shitload of questions, but I wasn't about to let those questions ruin what was ultimately a really fun like crime crime like crime film with sci-fi and zombie elements. It was really it was really a well-written film. Well, about as well written as you get with the flaws that I've already mentioned. I'm going to stop talking about writing, otherwise I'm just going to keep picking at the fact that there's so many problems with how they handled time travel in this film. Anyway, moving on from that, uh, acting. Well, I went into this having only seen a small number of films starring Tim, starring Tim Thomerson. And I know, I know that Thomerson is like, is like one of the most is like one of the most hammy actors out there. Like he honestly, like he honestly basically is like a, he basically is like a low budget Shatner. And that is exactly why I love every single scene that, that he is in because he just, he just absolutely steals it. Like it honestly doesn't matter if he's fighting against a little old lady in a future fucking diner. It doesn't matter if he's whooping up on a mall fucking Santa. Uh, speaking of that, I, I guess I should mention this too because this is something else that kind of led me a little bit. This here's, this is like another thing that, it wasn't really a question involving writing, it just, it kind of sort of makes Jack look a little bit less cool as a character, is that in order to become a trancer, you have to be, you, you, you have to have an incredibly weak mind, so that way Whistler is able to brainwash you and turn you into a trancer, which means that every single person who Jack fights in this film are weak-willed human beings who have been brainwashed, uh, which to me just sort of seems a little bit un unfair because that means that he's essentially wailing on the mentally on the mentally mentally in I'm gonna say the mentally in fucking sufficient uh, because they are of such weak minds. But still, that though now that that was a minor nothing. I just sort of thought I'd mention it back onto acting. Thomerson is at Thomerson is Thomerson is at his best here. It's like I really liked him in I really liked him in Doll Man. He was literally the only reason to even bother watching Doll Man versus versus Demonic Toys. But in this thing. Absolutely amazing. He is Tim Thomerson is the reason to watch this movie. He, he 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 seriously just takes every he takes every line of dialogue and just crafts it and molds it into this perfect 
perfect mountain of awesome cheese, and you're going to love it. Helen Hunt also also turns in a really solid, solid showing. In fact, guys, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any actor in, 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 in the film who turned in a bad showing, and I can't think of any. Uh, I am thinking. I'm thinking even of the scant few children who wind up in this film, and even they, even and even their performances are decent. Well, they're not as decent as everybody else, but God damn it, at least it's still decent. Um, so yeah, acting here is is really solid. Our sound mix here is really good. Special effects. I do have to stress this movie came out in 1985. Special effects back then, especially for low budget films, were not exactly the best, and we really don't have a lot in terms of special effects. Like we have, we have essentially like real standard standard uh, like. We have real standard light effects. I'm talking basically things like lasers, and every single time that a trancer is killed, their bodies glow a bright, bright red be, be, before they leave basically just a, like, ash fucking outline of where their body was. You know, and so it's all real basic stuff. It's all, like, real, real basic mid-80s uh, digital fucking light effects. All of those are done really well. Our makeup effects on the trancers are done, are done incredibly well. Um... Beyond that, guys, the only other, the only other things that are here that would be considered as special effects would be things like squibs and bullet wounds, and even then, there's almost none. There's almost there there's almost none of that in terms of like visible fucking like squibs that that you actually see like go off on people or on things. You will see a whole lot of blanks fired, but most of them actually don't don't cause anything to spark or they don't actually hit their hit their target. One moment though I will say was really cool in terms of special effects is Jack has a watch and when he and, and when he hits the button he basically is able to slow down time for 10 seconds and he use in well he gets a couple of these watches the first one he uses when when he and when he and Helen Hunt's character are being fired on and as he slows down time you can you you can actually see a bullet as it travels across the screen and even though it was a real cheap real basic basic composite shot it looked really really cool and it and, 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 and it was probably the best special effect in the entire film uh, which is why I feel the urge to mention it it is really really cool um, our sound mix is good our soundtrack is really good um, I'm gonna tell you though I'm kind of sick of Christmas music right now. I had no idea this movie was set during Christmas. It's not even. It is not even November, and I'm already sick of Christmas thanks to this film. Why? Because they have to hammer home the fact that it's that it's set during Christmas time. The worst instance, and I even made mention of it as the film was going, is we are treated to this ungodly, terrible punk rock cover of Jingle Bells. I couldn't wait for that scene to fucking end. Correction, I actually could not wait for the band to shut up, because the scene actually goes on even after they're done playing their hideous cover of Jingle Bells. Beyond that one song, everything else here is either is either real basic, basic score, real fun, like sci-fi-ish score, or or it's Christmas music. It's really hard to fuck up Christmas music. Unless, of course, you're doing a punk rock cover of, of fucking Jingle Bells. I swear, I want that band to burn. Holy shit. Anyway, um, lighting here. Lighting here is good. Our camera work here is is really good. Ultimately, guys, am I able to recommend Trancers? Definitely. I can totally recommend this if you are if you are a fan of sci-fi films. If you're if you are a fan of zombie films, you are probably you're probably gonna get a little bit out of this. If you are a fan of action films, you are you are gonna get a lot out of this. Guys, Trancers is an amazing movie and I'm really looking forward to checking out the sequels, which is why I'm happy that somebody sent in the first five movies in a box set. And if all five of these are good, then I'm going to need to try to get my hands on Trancers 6. No, I don't have a copy of Trancers 6 right now. Uh, but yeah, I can definitely recommend it. Especially, I, 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 I guess I should mention this right now, you, you, you actually can get this Trancers 5 film collection for a very good price i believe actually you can get this thing for a little for for a little under 10 bucks which means guys you're getting five movies for 10 bucks 
And the first movie, and the first movie alone is totally worth that. Um, of course, I'll be able to tell you about the others as the uh, as the as the month goes on. But so far, this thing is looking really solid, and I can totally recommend it. Now, Trancers came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in is a YouTuber by the name of, and I actually have it written down. It is a YouTuber by the name of the. It is the. It is. It is the Expatriate Seven Hundred. Uh, you can find his YouTube channel, of course, at YouTube.com/user/theExpatriate700. Uh, dude, I thank you. I was really curious about this series, uh, and ever since I did my first month month of the month of the full moon, uh, I have been looking forward to doing another month of the full moon simply so I could cover these. And I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do any of them if you hadn't have sent it in off of the wish list. And for that, dude, I thank you. You're fucking awesome. Once more, that is youtube.com slash user slash the expatriate 700. Swing over there and check out anything and everything he has on his channel. I'm going to assume that it is a he. And if I and and if I'm wrong, please tell me. And I'm terribly sorry if I am wrong. Now, <sighs> As much guys, I, as much as I'd love to say, I'm going to dive into even more stuff from you know, from you know, full moon features. For some reason, after watching this, I actually want to watch some stuff from Troma, and I still have my Blu-ray. Uh, I still have my Blu-ray of Troma's of, of of Troma's War that I still have to watch. Probably one of my favorite trauma films of all time, Tra Trauma's War. I'm going to go and watch that, and I'm also looking at the next one I'm doing this month, and, uh... So I'm gonna go enjoy Trauma's War, <laughs> and I'm gonna continue to cringe about thinking about this next movie. I'm looking at it right now, and, uh... Yeah... I don't think that one is going to be nearly as much fun as Trancers was, folks. Anyway, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.